Hello and welcome back to Rick's Kits. Today I've got a bit of a stash ad for you. Um, and it is one hell of a stash ad to be honest with you. Uh, I've been a little bit, uh, I get a bonus for the work that I've been doing over the last last year. Um, so I've now and added a few more kits to the stash so without any ado let's get this cracking okay so first up we've got, we've got the usual paints and stuff um so we've got a bit of tamiya xf53 neutral gray tamiya karke xf49 uh, smoke X19 and XF16 flat aluminium. Um, that's one of my preferred paints to do most of my uh, armor vehicles and stuff with. So um, they needed to be on running low price. Uh, this is a figure series from AK Interactive. It's uh, the new 3G paints and. Vietnam Green and Camouflage Uniforms. Now I needed this uh, for that pibber to paint my American Navy guys. And uh, I will say that um, these AK paints are pretty damn decent. That's for sure. You get good coverage with these. What you actually get in the box is six colours. You have um, a dark green, a gunship green, a light green uniform, mud brown, field drab, and green. green. So of those six colours, you can mix them about and come up with um, all, well, basically all the necessary uh, patterns needed for Vietnam soldiers and sailors' uniforms. And last up is uh, some detail up parts for the uh, this is a Zimmerat coating for the 135th scale uh, Tamiya elephant. A lot of it, then it is a there's a lot of a kit. And uh, I've never actually put this one on before, but I think basically what you're cutting, you're cutting it out and gluing it in place. So, well, I have to see when it uh, when it comes around to building that uh, particular kit. And, and next up is the. Uh, German heavy tank King Tiger for the Henschel turret in 135th scale. Uh, this is a FE modeler Meng kit. Um, I do have a Henschel tur or turret already pre built. Um, I think I was 100% sure that that is <clears throat> a Tamiya kit. So this is a men kit and basically as we know with men kits they are quite detailed so one of the um color schemes on the side is tank 223 of and heavy panzer tyrone 501 of the ss in the ardennes belgium in 1944 what have you got in here it's a lincoln link track which i prefer over lincoln link uh, there's pe parts and commander and loader figure included next
an oldie but a goodie. A German 8 ton semi truck 20mm flak veiling Psychopaz 7 1. Again, 135th military miniature series. This is Tamiya kit. Complete with five realistic figures in winter uniform. So basically, it's all, all winter uniform. Uh, it's a winter kit. Uh, you have movable gun barrels and a gun base. So that's the that this stop is uh, turning. Um, wanted this kit for so, so many years. Uh, finally found it on quite a cheap price, to be honest with you. I mean, they're normally about £20, 20 pound, £20, £25-ish. Um, even for this kit, which is, you know, quite an old kit. Um, but I picked this up for 15 on eBay and was uh, pretty well so all happy with with that kit. So got the usual old Tamiya pictures on the side of other vehicles available in the in the series. Um, not sure what the options are on this. Whether it's just white winter. Let's have a quick look. So you have got um it says Wehrmacht Waffen SS or Luftwaffe. So twenty fourth tank division, Gross Deutschland tank grenadier division, the first SS tank division, which is the Leibstander uh Adolf Hitler. The second is tank division, third is tank division. So one of those should be, yeah, the Hermann Guren Panzer division. So that's probably the one that we're going to do, which would be the Luftwaffe for one. Generally, that's associated with this kit is the Hermann Guren division. So yeah, please with that one. And next up is, <clears throat> excuse me, the Panzerkampfwagen 3, Psychothaz 141-1, Alphs L. So basically, I mean, this is the the L version of the tank. Uh, again, it's a Tamiya kit in 135th scale. Um... It has flexible tracks, so they're rubbery type tracks, which is understandable. Would have been nice to have uh, had link and length tracks. Because we all know flexible tracks are particularly rubbish. So you have in there also one lifelike on so here is the camouflage, which is two-tone, dark yellow and, and brown of the 11th Panzer Division, the 15th Panzer Regiment, summer 1943 in Russia. Uh, the reasoning for buying this kit, as soon as you figure, and you have the Hermann Goren Regiment in 42. Uh, the reasoning for this kit is I have a transporter which make sure that I have a transporter that needs a small tank on the back, either something like the uh has a thirty eight T Obviously, hits a sort of size, um, or a Panzerkamp Wagon Three. Uh, it can actually sit on, sit on the bed of the vehicle, and it also has a trailer. So this is for the trailer, and I need to get another thirty eight T or a um, Panzerkamp Wagon Two to actually sit in the bed of the trailer. Um, it won't be a diorama, but 
It's nice to have the vehicles to put in the trailer and transport. Excuse me while I fumble around for these. So first of two Shermans. We have the M4A3 Sherman, 75mm gun. Again, it's a tam it, it feels quite heavy, is Quite heavy, actually. Strange. Oh, tell me heavy. There must be other bits and pieces hidden away. Oh, I don't know. Hmm. I'll have a good look at it. So you get uh, two types of couplers, wheels and sprockets. Uh, you got four lifelike figures and various accessories. So I'm going to assume that's pouches, bits and pieces like showing on the side of the tank here, Stuff like that. So you'll have a tank commander, and you got these three fi figures here. 75 millimeter gun, and it's the uh, front. It's a late production, so this would probably Battle of the Bulge or something like that. So on this side of the box, you've got six ninth tank battalion of the six armored division. Well, there you go, 1945 Arden. Whether there's any other options or not, I have no idea. Oh, okay, so here's some of your accessories on the side. You've got a bar 1919, an M1 rifle Garand, I'm a couple of those. Uh, 1919 machine gun tripod, ammunition cases for 12.7mm, 7.62 ammunition case, along with K ration, wheel dish type. One, I'm not sure it's showing that, and there's the despair that goes on. And jerry cans. But yeah, it's, uh, first, first of two, like I said, Shermans. The second Sherman up is a British Sherman 5C Firefly. <laughs> this is a very recent kit that I've purchased. Purchased this on the 2nd of September, I think it was, to be precise. And this is a Ryfield Models kit. Again, like the Tacom kit, this is going to be fairly detailed. Um, why did I get this one? Because it's a Firefly. It's a British tank. I don't have many British tanks in my arsenal. I think the last one I had was the Churchill tank, which took a rip up the wall when I got a bit angry. Excuse me. So, with this one, you have workable track link and suspension system. I believe there's actually springs inside there. Help make them go up and down. I haven't had a 100% look at this, but I'm sure that's what I saw. When I had a quick flick through, you've got three types of antenna pedestals, three types of support rollers, two types of muzzle brakes, uh, two types of searchlight, three types of drive wheels, highly detailed photo etched, and three types of marking. So there's a CAD drawing. Vehicle inside with the two different types of muzzle brake and the hatches. If there's anything on the other side. Okay, so here's your markings. Here, number 12 with on the side is the 3rd Troop A Squadron of Hamptonshire Yeomanry in France. Or in the middle, you have got the British Guards Armoured Division, 5th Guards Armoured Brigade, 2nd Armoured Battalion, Grenadier Guards, A Squadron. Number of 44, and then you have here on the end the 1st Squadron, 2nd Armoured Regiment, Polish 1st Armoured Division, UK Spring 44. Um, I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, I did, well, I say I did, I do have the um, 
dragon version of this kit. Dragon's version of the cooking instructions. Those springs. My imagination, I cannot see them, so it's probably in my imagination. There's nothing. Oh, they're down there, 12 of them. I didn't imagine it. Oh, springs. Make the track suspension go up and down. Uh, should be jolly fun. Uh, I didn't really like the dragon kit, to be honest with you. Um, when you're cutting, ar it, cutting around on the front edge here and putting the little P parts, front mudguard mud things on there, just kept coming off all the time. You knock it off glue it back on, knock it off, glue it back on. Absolute nightmare. But that one, it hasn't got binned, but it's uh, somewhere where I'm out of the way where I'm not going to get to it in a hurry. So second to last as far as armour is concerned, again I have another Tamiya kit. And it's another one that I've wanted for a long, long time. It's the 8.8 centimeter pack 43 Alf Gachette's Wagen Nashorn Side Cafaz 164. As you can see, it's uh, a it's primarily it's a tank destroyer, a uh, heavy anti tank gun. Excuse me, that's because I'm, I'm trying to talk too fast. Uh, we're at 17 minutes, and this is going to be one hell of a stash heads. Uh, it's an open top vehicle, uh, easily destroyed, unfortunately, for the occupants. So in this kit, you are getting the 8.8 centimeter gun. Um, it says the main gun uses metal parts for authentic movement. I'm going to assume that is screws. They do like using screws to help elevate their guns. So you've got faithfully reproduced um, fighting compartment. Well, I do know there is actually quite which parts to replace all of that stuff, but um, I, think it's, I think it's dragon photo rich parts. There's nothing actually been made, Tamiya. Uh, it's a little bit of a play around from what I can gather to get it in there, but if you want to do it, it may look good to do that one. So you get uh, four figures in winter uniform and comes with three marking options. Here we have on the side here is the 519th Heavy Anti-Tank Battalion Eastern Front 1904. <clears throat> there is loader commander. Oh, there's two loaders there, by the look of it. I'm sure one of them is supposed to be going at anything on the other side. Yeah, we have the third company of the 89th Heavy Anti Tank Battalion Eastern Front Autumn 1944. And I believe. Sorry, Arthur, this is not in camera, guys, but every time I touch my camera, it falls off and. It was on the floor and it's a, it's a bit irritating to keep picking the goddamn thing up. So, uh, you get this lovely coloured booklet in multiple languages inside. So yeah, there's three colour options on that. Yep, it's only three colours. So, like I said, you've got the 519th Heavy Tank Battalion Eastern Front 44, 3rd Company 88th Heavy Tank Battalion Eastern Front 44, and 223 525th Heavy Anti Tank Battalion in Italy 1944. Uh, on this side, you have the uh, call out for wind pattern camouflage. Um, And some actual photos 
player of the lineoff of the actual photos of the self. I think, judging by roofing area in this vehicle. Oh, yeah, it's the Titania. It's the uh, Kabinka tank. Um, fairly newish, well, I think it's fairly new to me. Um, the usual gump. But yeah, it'd be a good one to build. I do have a couple of other Nash horns. One is the Dragon. Um, one is the AFV Club. Now I have the Tamiya version. Um, I'm probably going to enjoy doing the Tamiya version and maybe the Dragon version, but the Armour Fighting Vehicle Club one. We know that AFV are very dramatic with their part counts. That may end up on the back burner for a long time. Okay, and last up for this first part of Stash Ads is the Psychopaz 184 Schwerer Yadk Panzer Elephant, <clears throat> which I bought the uh, Zimmer it for. Another German heavy tank destroyer. A bit like the National, but unfortunate. Um, actually, fully enclosed armour. Um, unreliable of sorts. Always gearbox and engine usher issues, transmission issues. <clears throat> but nevertheless, it's a nice vehicle. You get three torso figures, so there's nothing, nothing below the waist with these guys. Um, onto that, you get a one-piece fighting compartment made via slide molding technique. Interesting. One of the tracks. Assembly type tracks with realistic sag. So let me have a quick look at the tracks because I'm going to assume probably to make us pass out for me. Right, we have link and length tracks. I feel it'd be nice if they just put that on the box. And some of them are slightly curved, so that's probably what. The... Yeah, yeah, length and length tracks. Nice. Two eight. Eight the plastic track. So this one again, I think you get a lovely. Cut that to one side. Getting everything in the way. You get another one of these background information booklets on the elephants uh, in multiple language. English, French, Chinese, uh, German, and then you have the call outs for uh, 101st, uh, sorry, 102nd First Company 653rd Heavy Engine in Italy. Then you have number 332 Third Company 653rd Heavy Anti Tank. Eastern Front, summer of 44. And 232 is the second company, 653rd Heavy Anti Tank Battalion, Eastern Front, summer of 44. So these are both the same unit. Actually, all of those were the same unit, all three of them. First company, third company. How many of these? Of these three survived, probably none of them. Yeah, that's another one to look forward to. Okay, so that's it for this stash ad, gents. 
This is a part one stash ad. I do have a part two stash ad. It's just I didn't want to bore the crap out of you. Uh, no one likes to sit through. Apparently I'm at uh, nearly 26 minutes of people talking about stuff they put in their stash. So I'm going to shut this one up. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my subscribers, all you lovely people. Making my happy. Sounds a bit poncy, doesn't it? Okay. Thanks for being members or uh, subscribing to Rick's Kids. I really do appreciate you all. See you in the next one. Thanks for now. Bye for now.